and welcome. Welcome into the television version of Strategies for Living. I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan. I'm delighted that you've tuned in. Join with me today on Strategies. Strategies for Living, well, we're all about helping us live healthier, happier, more peaceful lives in our bodies, minds, spirits, and relationships. And we do it by engaging in important conversations with life strategists every time we do Strategies for Living. We've got one of my very favorite life strategists with us today. He is the president and publisher of Times Media and the Shreveport Times, Mr. Alan English. Thank you. Alan, welcome. Thank welcome you back to Strategies. It's always a pleasure to be with you, David. You Thank are you always a great life strategist, and you've got a lot to tell us about. Lots going on down at the Times. Oh, we're always changing and adapting. You are. You are. It's, it's, a, it's a new day, right? It's yeah, new day, every, new day, every, every day. day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the day of setting and forgetting and saying you've got, you know, here's my plan, just work the plan, those days are gone. You've got to constantly be working on uh, adapting to what people are doing and how they're changing their behaviors. I like the new look. I really like the new look of the times. Of course, I'm one of those old-fashioned guys. I, I, now, I know I can, I, can, I can pull up the times on my, uh, on my iPhone. I can pull up the times on my iPad, but it's just not morning <laughs> unless I have my cup of coffee and my newspaper. Thank my you Shreveport for Shreveport Times. Yeah, I appreciate that. And all across the country, um, people who uh, want to keep civically engaged and informed continue to make newspapers their morning habit. And interestingly as well, uh, people with means make newspapers their daily habits. Um, the good news on uh, the other part that maybe aren't subscribers is they're still reading the news one way or another for free, from a friend, online. So news consumption uh, today is intense. It's intense in both print and digital. Put those together and uh, it's a formidable force in terms of the way people spend their time. Times Media. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what makes up Times Media, Alan? Well, it's a little bit of what you just said, right? I mean, the idea of who we are is uh, not just a newspaper. We're a media company that is in many different spaces. And those are some, so you think of them as products, I tend to think of them as audiences, right? We're serving uh, uh, women who are upwardly mobile, uh, emerging leaders with a product called Rouge. Um, that is a magazine that went through a conversion, uh, used to be called Red River Moms. It's yes. got a makeover yes. and is, uh, um, better tuned for that audience now as they continue to, to change themselves. And so that is an example of another product of ours that's out there. All of our digital assets, the ShreveportTimes.com, the, uh, uh, the apps that we have, of which there are about, I can't even keep up, we have about five or six apps um, that serve people, including some uh, general apps like Cars.com and HomeFinder.com, right. which we have uh, relationships with to deliver local information on. And then we also have a product called Voices that is free. We also have uh, a, um, a really unique product folks, about many folks really know about, but it is on the military base. Yes. It's called The Warrior. Yes. And it is, uh, we print about 9,000 to 10,000 of those every week. It has military information That's in there. That's a weekly publication, mm -hmm. right? And it's on the audience for the military personnel. And that is something we work with the base to produce. And an example is if you're trying to sell trucks to, uh, in this community, uh, you want to reach that large military audience. This is one of the effective ways because it's got a 95% pickup rate um, when we drop those papers. So those are free to the military. And we do a number of other, other things. Uh, our newest media venture is events. And in the last two years, we have been developing more and more events because how do people get their information? In many different ways. Right. You may go to an informational event, an informational experience, and uh, people will pay for that as long as we provide service that they're looking for. Quality and, and the service. The same yeah. thing as delivering a newspaper on your driveway. It's an experience. It's an event in your life, right? Right. So we're building out that business um, in a bigger way. And we've had a very successful first year doing it. And in year two, we see expanding it um, greatly. You just have mentioned military, and I, I went to I went to high school, mm -hmm. uh, grade school and high school with John Andrew Prime, mm -hmm. and uh, John just retired mm -hmm. recently. 
after what 37 years at yeah. the time? Yeah, yeah. I think it was 39, but he's not yeah. retired, John. Yeah. John, but there was he'll a, never retire. There was an article this morning where he waxed nostalgic about mm -hmm. some of. Uh, uh, I didn't know many of the names other than, as he said in the article, Jim Montgomery uh, was a, a name that I uh, knew. My, my sister went to college with Jim, uh, and I do Jim well. Uh, but uh, John is still uh, still going e even after retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's going to continue to um, serve this community, as he's told me in many conversations he and I have had. He's he's doing uh, work for many different entities, and his, as a historian as a community historian and uh... He's, I see a book or two in his future. He's got yeah. a couple books behind him yeah. and he's gonna do some more and this is an opportunity for him to take some time to focus on doing a, a book and some other things. I don't think you'll see John's name leave the Times pages. It'd just be less frequent right? and more focused on uh, some of the things John wants to do. Right, right. But uh, with John's retiring, uh, Opening at the uh, editorial page, editor. We are continuing to evolve inside of our newsroom in the way they operate. There are people inside the newsroom already who are capable of this kind of work. Um, so we're looking at what jobs are to be done by who. But yes, the opinion pages itself has gone through about five major evolutions. And in it the looks last good today. Yeah, it last, really looks good today. Years. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're continuing to experiment with. Uh, I like the cartoon on the bottom commentary. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, design's one part. Yep. The selection of content's another. Um, we're running editorials from other newspapers in a mix with what we might write or what the community writes, just to give more perspective. How many years have you been in the in the business in the in the newspaper business? I think. Uh, let's see. Probably coming up on. I'm well over 25, headed to 30. A lot of ink. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of ink that has now transitioned into ink and digital. Is it challenging today, Alan? It, it's, it's as challenging as it was, and I would probably say uh, more exciting and intense. Yeah. You know, it's always been a business that's been changing. Um, if you look back at the pages of the Times before we went digital and to think there was always there were always changes going on some liked some not right and that was uh, that just has to happen in a much more intense way now as uh, readers are changing as they the ones that are getting older who don't like change as much um, are meeting now you and I met over a, a whole, change. a whole generation of change I don't know whether you remember this you and I met over a change do you remember uh, you came into town getting old <laughs> you, you, you came into town and one of the first things you did when you came into town you uh, looked at the paper and there was a column that had been going a long time called tell the time yeah, oh, well, I mean, I think uh, actually, I didn't, and I think Tell the Times stayed since I came in town. You maybe didn't know me as managing editor when I right. came in 2000, right. when I became editor. That's, that's and right. And the decisions that's right. were mine. Well, and, and you, began to, you began to dialogue. You mm -hmm. entered, and that's the reason I called you mm -hmm. and invited you on the radio program, because you were in a dialogue. Yeah. Tell me, tell me why you like Tell the Times, tell me why you don't like Tell the Times, and you were in the process of do we keep it or do we not keep it? And that's the way you and I first mm -hmm. met. And that, that whole um, type of commentary, right, has been evolving um, from what used to be this uh, call-in method to run in print and, you know, anonymous. Right. Which You could slam, people could slam anybody and anything and, and until I, the time. Right. Yeah. And, and I've had to change some of my views on this, forced by sort of watching media evolve. Because at the time, I believe a lot, many of us were, um, were, were pretty offended by people being able to say some of the things they were saying anonymously. Right. right. Well, now the tools for being able to do so are vast. They are. Yes, they <laughs> and are. And so whether, you know, trying to filter that into a form, a fair form into print, that would be problematic today, even harder than it was then. Right. Um, and in a print form, I think you count on a certain type of experience and a certain type of inf information. And that just wasn't congruent, in my mind, with the experience that you would seek from, a, you know, being able to read considered opinion, viewpoints, and journalism in a fair way. And this seemed to be more unfair than the other things we were doing. And so over time, we couldn't put enough resources into it to maintain a fair and balanced approach to it. And when that happens, I think you have to look at where your resources are and decide, what's my mission? in this arena 
at this given moment in time. And for me, I, I felt like we needed to stand as the print experience for something. Right. And that continues to this day to be um, vetted, researched, considered viewpoints, and using anonymity at only when necessary. Absolutely necessary. Absolutely. And so when you come to read the print newspaper, it's different than anything else you will do today. Yes. And we believe that that unique experience will um, help this product have a lifetime that uh, we don't know the end till. Right, right. When you compare the print version of the Times uh, versus how other newspapers are faring around the country, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that we are, we're pretty healthy when you, comparatively. Well, healthier than some, uh, more challenged than some. Uh, I believe you, know, you have to look at all the different ways we survive as a media company. Newspaper is just one thing that we do. So when you look at the human body, it's got many different parts that all have to work together right. for a healthy body. Right. For the times to be healthy, um, we ha our business has to be successful in more ways than just the print product. And that's true of a lot of other media companies as well. You know, I'm sure you've seen a change in uh, the number of people. I remember the very first time when, when I visited you down at the Times, came into your office, the press was running, mm -hmm. and there was that vibration. <laughs> and I, I looked up at you and I said, Alan, do you, do you ever get used to this? You, uh, don't even think about it. But that, you, you don't feel that vibration anymore. No. The press is, uh, is brand new. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's not, not brand, brand new. But it's, it's not but it's, brand new, yeah. yeah. yeah it's it's kind of, we bought six a, and a half million dollar investment we, plus, right? It's a, actually, to, to this date, it's now probably up to about 16 to 18 million dollar investment. Wow. That's now, quite an investment well, in this community. Appreciate that. And there are a number of employees that um, serve this community um, as well. I mean, we have on site, uh, we probably have about 200 em, um, employees or contractors, um, all who uh, live and work in this community and, and serve it at churches and elsewhere. So thank you. I mean, there, we continue to invest in being a big part of this community, and that press was part of it. The story we talked about before was this was a this was like buying a good certified car. Mm -hmm. um, the problem was this certified car had some problems. Had some problems. <laughs> you didn't know until you hooked it up and, and got right, it running. It had to fight with the fight with the um, a little bit to get it going well. And we had, we um, saw the need to invest um, beyond what you know to kind of soup this car up to serve this community right. and get it running smooth. Then what I can report to you today is that we are done with remediation product project completely. Fantastic. And the only things we are experiencing in the way of problems these days are uh, out of our control problems. Major mechanical, uh, just something middle of the night of spring sprung. Right. Um, we have electrical things with Swepco, the power goes out. Or a computer error, but the press itself is solid and Humming, humming, humming along, along well, yeah. I know, I know the paper comes on time these days, mm -hmm. and that's good. Yeah, and you can, you, well, you know, the interesting piece is I have a lot of people who call me when it's not quite ready digitally when they're looking for it as well. Yeah. For, the guy yeah. called me at 4.30 in the morning. He's like, hey, where's, why can't I get to the digital edition? And I'm like, well, it's usually ready about that. Okay, well, let me see what's going on. And we found a little bug. He helped us find a bug, changed it. Now, 4.30 in the morning, if you're that early. If you're that early, you're up, early it's coffee, there. So and you 4.30 can go to and, the, and the Times is ready There's two ways to you. get it um, in its print experience form on the iPad or clicking on the e-edition. As long as you're a subscriber, you'll be able to put in your information. You have to activate your subscription, and you'll be able to get to the full edition of the paper that early. Right. And, and of course, if, you're, if you don't want the print product, you can subscribe just to the digital product, That's right? right. And also, the whole digital experience is a different one than the print experience. And the folks who come to us digitally, um, many of them do both, right? They're busy working, and the weekend they tend to read more. If you get a Sunday-only subscription, you do get access to the whole digital um, array. So there's all kinds, however you want it, you can get it. So the, the interesting part about our live digital is that's like watching news develop, evolve, and change. And then you'll see a, the version you see in print does get uploaded digitally. But that print version is what I was telling you about that's different. It, it actually goes through the process of like what really needs to be published. Right. Right. For the history, for 
you to, know, the essential information. For posterity. Or, or essential information. Right. We're talking to Alan English. He is our life strategist today. He is the president and publisher of Times Media and the Shreveport Times. We will have more. We're going to, let's talk a little politics. Let's get on our soapboxes Ooh. when we come back. We've had a big election. We've got a big election to come. Let's, 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 let's get on our soapboxes. Can we do that? Okay, briefly. <laughs> okay. Alan English today is our life strategist here on Strategies for Living. We'll be right back. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already outplaying him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. Eight years into the disease was when all the light went out. For me, it was heart-wrenching. Look into the eyes of somebody with Alzheimer's sometimes, uh, you just don't see the, the, the person's soul is like gone. And it takes a toll on everyone. I mean, it's, it's, it's a depressing disease to watch unfold before your eyes. She actually thought those of us who were caring for her and who loved her most were her worst enemies. More and more responsibilities fell on my shoulders. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. The magnitude of it is indescribable. My mother taught me to be in the moment. We have to live in the moment with them. And I'm going to be with that person right now in this moment, wherever she is. Now is the moment. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. And welcome back. Welcome back into Strategies for Living, the television version. You're watching Strategies for Living. Don't forget, we're on the radio and on yeah. digital and in print, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, News Radio 710 Keel, Sunday mornings between uh, 9.05 and 10 is where you can catch us on the radio. You can also get us at www.strategiesforliving.com and every Wednesday in the Voices section of the Shreveport Times. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's digital too, right? Yeah, well, Voices, uh, interesting you bring that up. Voices is its own product. Yes. Um, and you can, yeah, you can get it digitally. All these things are available digital. That's what's great about having a digital subscription, right? You get everything. everything. You're looking for something, you don't, you're not going to run into a, an annoying, you know, pop-up or uh, uh, that keeps reminding you to sign in. Um, but uh, yeah, you have an incredible resource at your fingertips on local information, history, and news. Um, and we're looking at trying to figure out how um, some of our archives may be part of that in the future. Fantastic. So, Alan English, uh, president and publisher of Times Media and the Shreveport Times, thanks for being our life strategist thanks today. Thanks for having me. Uh, on our soapbox now, uh, did you get surprised? Uh, were you surprised at the at the last election here, the governor's no, election, I, I John Bell uh, defeating uh, David Bitter? Not surprised. Bitter? And I, I, I noticed, I want to get into I wasn't into surprised this. at all. Uh, you weren't surprised? Okay. <laughs> what, uh, you didn't endorse. You did not make an endorsement this time. I, what goes into that? What goes into well, how you, you decide to, you know, I'm sure you talked to both candidates. Uh, for goodness sakes, you're, you're the Times. So, we moderated yeah. some of the debates. You did. You did. Yeah. So what goes Greg into Hilburn the decision did, uh, did to moderation. endorse or not to endorse? Well, our endorsement process itself is evolving, right? We do endorse. We have endorsed in the past. Yes, you have. I yes. expect endorsements will continue to be a part of what we do. Um, however, the process is evolving. And you mentioned John Andrew Prime, right. who had become our editorial page editor at the time. And right in the middle of the elections, one of our leading bo editorial board candidates Retires. was retiring. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't feel like we were in the best position um, to do, do endorsements under this changing sort of mood. And it, you know, to have a member of the board leave either just after or just before an endorsement might also create questions that weren't you know, necessary sure. or needed. Sure. Plus, we needed his intel, right? 
on the discussion process. And as, so as we work through his retirement, that just put us, let's just put it on hold. We'll take a look at our endorsement process. Because, and we've felt this for a while because we've been doing fewer endorsements overall in the last five years and we've been focusing on the ones where there is a, a, a real uh, opportunity to help uh, clarify and um, point out some strengths and weaknesses of candidates. And, and in our case, we said, all right, we got our resources, John Andrews retiring, let's focus our energies on reporting out as much as we can, as much as we can afford to, right. on the different races, including um, you know, some of the local races that were there as well. And so that's where our energy went. And I think in the DA race, for example, uh, we, early on, there was a lot of, oh, the Times is going to do this, the Times is going to do that. A lot of suppositions were out there. Right. And they didn't know what they were talking about because we had already decided we're not going, not to, going to do that. Probably not going to endorse. Yeah. But they're free to think what they want. Sure. And in the end, um, we got several comments about how fair they thought, and these were insiders into the campaigns. Some of the reporting was after being highly critical before we even got started. It's almost like they were trying to in their ways, try to force us to do something that we were really just trying to work through the process on. Uh, 2016 coming up, mm -hmm. just around the corner, huge election probably for this country. Yeah. Um, very polarized. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's going to be uh, really interesting. I know that from a press point of view, it's a, you, you, you gotta with, I, with, a, with a Donald I'm, Trump uh, and a. Uh, uh, on one end, mm -hmm. and a Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton on the other end. My goodness, it, well, it gives you a lot to. It, it gives does. You a lot of material, doesn't it? It does give a lot of material. Um, some of it's not worth your time, but it does give you a lot of material. Right. I think what we have to focus on are the issues that are in front of us, and who best can help move us in a direction that um, has us feeling and being uh, more stable and uh, and progressive. Uh, and I don't mean that in a Democrat or a Republican way, but a, a, a country that's ready to take on what is a very fast changing environment. We tend to look at the political um, environment and what politics or politicians we might need to take that on. Well, our world uh, is far more digital and bringing more people closer together than ever before. And as we worry about the borders, there aren't any borders in our digital world. Right. And I think our leadership is going to need to have someone who's savvy enough to work in a, on many levels. So I'd be interested to see who's sophisticated and uh, as well, re well read on, on a lot of topics, not just international politics, but to understand how to help us and our businesses thrive and our families thrive in this fast changing world. You know, so many people around the world are concerned about terrorism. For years, we said it can't happen to us. Obviously, 9-11, 2001, it did. Uh, we've always felt safe here in this community. Or do, do we feel, do, you know, uh, we, we, we've always felt the, uh, that we're, we're protected. Um, are we? Well, I mean, it's about perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, you believe certain things. To, um, and that turns you know uh, turns you to feeling one way or another based on the information you take in. I, I think if you take in as much information as possible, you you uh, have to balance out where that information is coming from. And so, in, do we are we safe? I don't know, David. Have we have we ever been that safe? Probably not, Alan. Yeah, I mean we've got built ourselves up to feel like we're safe, right. but we've been so vulnerable for so long. <laughs> Maybe we've been lucky up till now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there are just so many things you think. I think folks, uh, uh, you know, they worry about some very specific um, concerns when there are so many ways terrorists can have an impact on us based on their skill level and their mind to do harm. Yes. And so, uh, winning the hearts and minds is um, our our best defense and our best offense. In terms, of, in terms of freedom, that freedom is in its base, even for all the things that makes us feel less safe, freedom is the thing that will make us safe as a, as a world. Well said. Do, do you ever wake up in the morning and pinch yourself? 
I'm president and publisher of, of <laughs> Times Media and, and, and the Shreveport Times. Well, you were asking about feeling safe? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I don't wake up and pinch myself. I mean, I never, I never envisioned becoming the president and publisher um, of, a, of, of a company. I've been, uh, this is the second uh, place I've been the president and publisher of. I, I, you know, David, I didn't see it coming. It, right. it came. Right. And um, right. it's, uh, I feel blessed that I have this opportunity to make a difference. Um, What's the most challenging part of your job, Alan? Uh, the thing that's the most exciting too. I mean, it's it's working um, on many different levels with all all the different types of people, and uh, working uh, working at a really really fast pace, uh, balancing a, a, a million balls in the air. We talked a little minute ago about all the products. Right. Well, there's we want to serve the community, and doing so now means uh, doing it so many different ways, and. The challenging part is uh, prioritizing what is needs attention and focus at this given moment in time, and trying to avoid the distractions, you know, that come in. Uh, and I guess I'll add to this is that the, uh, I mean, customer service is the far and above the most important thing for us to have excellence at. Right? It's also one of my biggest challenges with so many different people doing customer right. service. Right. Right. And so um, you take an email, if every email and every phone call has got to be returned, uh, on a bad day, it, you know what that looks like? I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> 40,000 subscribers and I can, I can know, only, I can 500, only imagine. 500,000 unique visitors to my website if the website goes down. <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine. I, I, I would imagine in between all the meetings, you, you're answering lots of phone calls and, and emails every day. Yeah, but our, our focus, though, and this is, has to be laser focused on delivering results for your customer. What do you like most about your job? Uh, I, I, I think opportunities like the Joy Fund, hmm. you know, to uh, have an impact in the community in a positive way. Uh, these experiences we're offering at events may be profitable, sometimes they're not. But the uh, experiences, seeing the light in someone's eyes from uh, having how much a does the revelation. Joy, how much does the Joy Fund raise every year? For we get our close community. to $100,000. That's great. And that money impacts where? Directly into holiday projects, into people's lives. I wrote a story recently where a man who received a bike from the Joy Fund long ago is now a regular giver to the Joy Fund. Wow. His life turned around on, for many different reasons, but he remembers that bike. He remembers that and bike. And that was an inspiration to him. So that Joy Fund goes directly impacting. There's no administrative fees. We take in project requests from nonprofits and others, and we evaluate them. We check them. We make sure the money goes to the project. You vet those things, mm -hmm. and then the money We've goes. We've been doing that for 102 years. Wow. Wow. It's a, it's a tradition at the holiday time. I think that's fantastic. And, and uh, again, just one more thing that uh, has got to make your job worthwhile. It's exciting. Yeah. What are we looking forward to? What will we see in 2016 for the Times? Now, brand more new change. section rolling out, yep. uh, a luxury living, right? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, you'll see us continue to evolve and adapt. And, and what that means is we are tuning what we do to deliver results for our audiences and our customers. Luxury living is uh, uh, an aspirational section, right? It's the, the things that sometimes there are things that motivate us in terms of the way we live, the, the things we use to make our lives more, uh, e make our lives easier so we spend more time with family. Um, luxury living is all of that and more. Um, it's a feature section, um, could be labeled other things, you know, from the past, if you look to past sections. So you'll see a re, a rebirth of some things you saw in the past from the times um, in terms of coverage of uh, lifestyle. Maybe one day in the future we'll have a strategies for living section. What do you think? Mm. Uh, mm. Possibly. I yeah. I, I, I actually kind of think the, the entire edition is a strategy for living I section. Think you're probably, <laughs> I think you're probably right. It's all a strategy today. Uh, thank you so much for the work you do. You're an important part of this community. I, I think that, I, I mean this sincerely, I've uh, read the Times since I was a little guy. I'm very proud of the Times today. I'm proud to be a part of the Times and, and to write a column for you every Wednesday. So well, thank you. We're thank excited you. to have you. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very excited about all the things that you're doing, Alan, at the Times. And I, uh, I'm looking forward to many more visits with you Great. here as we uh, 
watch the changing and evolving. So maybe when we move into a new building, you'll have us back? They, absolutely. Is, is there, is there uh, some uh, moving ahead on well, that? Well, there's progress on that. We're, we're, uh, we're, we've made some significant progress. I have nothing to report to you today that's solid, right. but uh, it's all looking good. We're, we're hoping to move in the next year or two. Fantastic. And we think uh, you know more modern building. When the time is right. Are, yep. Absolutely. Alan English, president and publisher of the Shreveport Times Media and the Shreveport Times Print, and who knows what's for the future. Mm, where, the times, where the Times is going to go. And uh, folks, thank you for tuning in to Strategies for Living Now. Let's see, the, uh, the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, you're going to sing? On the, the first, first day of Christmas, Christmas, my true love gave to me a subscription, a subscription to, to the Times. Times. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you. We won't, it, we won't Keep let singing. you endure anymore. <laughs> On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two Strong's pies and a, and a subscription, subscription to, to the, the Times. Times. Oh, gee. <laughs> See you next time on Strategies for a Living. <laughs>